So I'm going to try to condense this. We, we have a little less than uh, maybe 45 minutes. Um, I can give an eight-hour presentation on this. But the sole purpose I'm here is to speak on behalf of the UNESCO slave route. Uh, is anybody familiar with that at all? Okay, good. Well, that's not good. Good that I could, whatever I say, you're going to believe. Bad that you don't know. Um, the other piece of this is to speak um, specifically about my role as a federal commissioner. Um, what's our intention? What's the mission? What's the charge and responsibility by the federal government in the preservation and recognition and commemoration of 400 years plus of African American history and culture? We have the Gregory School. Now, it's so interesting because history, History is like a road map. It, it, whatever your end destination is, it'll, it'll point you there if you excavate it. You know, cultural anthropologists love this place. Um, academics love this place. Historians love this place. So I was thinking about this as an artist. I was, you know, we're, we're quite visual. So when I walked through the Gregory School and I was looking at all the images, and I, and I saw paintings, and they were, they were up on easels, and... I, 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 I kind of figured the date was like 1940, the latter 1940s, that you had an art exhibition of African Americans, 1940, and the images looked just like the images of, of, of Cedric Ingram that's upstairs. And I said, who had the wherewithal in, in the 1940s to have an exhibition? Who provided that opportunity? So I went into the archives at the Gregory School, and I found out that the city of Houston in partnership with the Colored Carnegie Library, were sponsoring African-American exhibitions, the Negro National Anthem was being sung and everything else. And I'm saying, wow, you know, this place was an artistic mecca at some point in time here in Houston. Now, they talked about the Harlem Renaissance. They talked about the self-funded Renaissance in Chicago. But they never talked about the Renaissance that happened right here in Houston. Last but not least, I want to go back to the um, National Park Service and Department of Interior because um, we were formed under the Department of Interior and the, um, and the oversight of the National Park Services. And the National Park Services takes care of all the monuments around the country. Well, are you guys familiar with the Daughters of Confederate monuments, all the Southern Confederate monuments, about the Southern culture, Southern narrative, all these generals that, were, that lost the war during the Civil War? And you go in these Southern states and you see these monuments all day long, Beauregard, I mean, you name Andrew Jackson and so forth and whatnot. Well, it repulses me in a sense being an African American. Now, I may, for others it may not, but, but, but there's some sensibilities around that. Well, the National Parks takes care of those monuments. The Department of Interior has two responsibilities, land resources and cultural heritage. If you don't know that, you don't know what to argue at. So everybody points to the Daughters of Confederate, you gotta be pointing to the, the Department of Interior. Because those, those are the ones who make that happen. And so, so in my own kind of way, you know, I've, I just want to import some information. I want to be honest about what I've learned in my capacity as a federal commissioner, as an artist, you know, to, to, to have an, an honest conversation. Because if we, if we don't, then it's the same step and repeat. You know, you got to look at me with some reverency and some importance outside of, of an entertainment value. You, you got to look at my level of acuity, of, of, of academic persuasion, um, and intelligence to say that there's some worth in who I am. Our plans is writing a new history. This is um, our signature event that we had at the Congressional Building in Washington, D.C. on the Hill. We had no money. Um, we had no money. It's, it's, it's like, you know, how do you take that pig or the, the leftover, the remnants, and you make something good out of it? This is what we did. Uh, Nick Cannon Foundation stepped up and, uh, and, and, and blessed the commission with $75,000. Ms. Addie Richbird, our executive director, did an exemplary um, planning session that she spoke, that we had a program that spoke about, about 1619 up through Reconstruction through the redemptive period, through the Jim Crow era, through the civil rights, through the age of Obama until here now. We had over 250 students in that audience. Attentive. We, Nick Cannon was the MC. Um, the, the program, when you're dealing at the, um, at the, at the, in this congressional thing, it's time sensitive. Three hours, we were in and out on time. Um, 
We're right here. This is the director, interim director of the Department of Interior, and these are the commissioners. Um, Lewis Rogers, um, Mr. Freeman there, Mr. Carson, um, Prophet Cox, myself. Um, I forget the, um, the gentleman who was the interim for the um, Department of Interior. Um, um, Joe Green, who was the, uh, was the chair at the time. Um, Terry Brown, superintendent of the National Parks Services for Fort Monroe. Um, my, Dr. Myron Pope, Pope um, Kenya Cox, and that was our liaison, um, Christine uh, Woodward. Um, but this was the team, um, and still the team in, in place, that is, 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 is working very hard, very diligently. We all federalized employees. That means that we work for the federal government. We don't receive any compensation for doing this. So it's, 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 it's a monumental task. It's one that's, 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 that the responsibility should not just be charged with the commission, but it should be charged with the, the entire community of involvement across the board to show how significant, how important our history, our contribution, and our culture. Commission is here to do. It is, you know, to say that a brand of diversity, statistical diversity, is not segregation. Houston is the fourth most economically segregated city in the country. The income inequality here is four points higher than the national average. It's higher than Baltimore. Wow. It's just really tough. So, what's the common? What? What? what, what you connect the dots. What do you come to? Racism. Uh, we do go look on our website and look at our white papers. Because if you don't look at the white papers and if we don't <coughs> confront it, then it's not confronted. And so I always like to tell, I always like to be the, the nice guy who tells the, the sad salient facts that we're in one of the most racist cities in the country. When you see, in just a couple of points, when you see that there is the fourth most economically segregated city in the country, that means that we don't have any money here. And then you combine that with the fact that foundations here give less than 1% of their funds to of color assets. That means that then we don't have any money and they don't want to give us any money. And given that situation, of course, I come from two on both sides of my family, gener four generations of entrepreneurs, you can make your way. Uh, and we've always made our way through that. And so we, you know, we are at the point of, I mean, we can get here. And I always have to make the point of where we live, because it isn't just the that where we live. When Ted starts talking about what can you do where we live, mm. uh, this is the only, I mean, and it's, uh, it just sort of like gets by. Now, we can get a, a grant from the National Endowment of the Arts, one of the hardest grants to get in the country, but we can't get one from here. We're subject to the Ford Foundation, but we can't get one from here. That's less than 1% on those foundations. Then it begs certain kind of questions. Those questions are, what happens to the people of color on those boards? Where are the, where's the representation inside? Where's that coming? And it's, it's, and it's not a Democratic or, or Republican thing here. It's across the board. Uh, so if there's anything that you want to confront every day, it's that racism. And you ask, what things can you do? Well, the first thing is you can embrace the fact that why is this happening? And then go out and tell people support this asset. Because in this conversation, there's a need for a black voice. Not a, a black voice. An asset that is controlled by people of color. Uh, so with that, I want to thank Ted again. I have to always make that point because that's what HMAC is. All right. Thanks, thank John. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's a lot of people. Right there, both of you.